What's going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. Now I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Um, this week has been an interesting one for me, very busy, very active and very lighty as you can probably tell. So I finally invested in a circle light that a lot of those vloggers like to use and as you can see I can film quite comfortably now regardless to what the light might be and it also gives me that sexy circle in my eyes. Oh yes, oh yes. So I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Um, this week we're going to be talking about axolotl behaviour and how to better understand it. Axolotls do loads of little things. Some of them are really cute, some of them can be quite alarming, and some of them just have a scratching head wondering what's going on. So this week we're going to break down the most common things that tend to happen with your axolotl and try and better understand why they do what they do. I've got some seriously good content coming in the coming weeks, so before we go any further with this video, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of the future content that I'm producing. I've got some very good ideas, I've got some very, very top secret things coming up too, and I want you guys to be around to witness all of it, so be sure to hit the subscribe button, which is just there. Well, it's not. You can't press that. Look, it don't work. You have to press it. It's down here. Just down here. So despite the cuteness, they do do some really, I said do do, they do some really silly things that kind of can kind of catch us off guard. So the first one is, why is my axolotl floating at the surface? Why is that? Why do they do that? So usually axolotls are completely in control of this. They, they just tend to gulp lots of air, which will obviously in turn make them float at the surface. They kind of float around doing their thing. And then when they want to sink, they kind of burp it out or trump it out and then they slowly begin to sink again. So they do usually have control of this. If they tend or they appear not to have control of this, usually that comes with age when they're learning. So there's a lot for them to learn and learning how to better balance is definitely part of that thing they do when they're smaller. If you do tend to find your axolotl can't control it and they tend to be floating at the surface for prolonged periods of time and they're starting to get a little bit worried and they start trying to frantically swim back down but they can't seem to stay down, the chances are they've probably just got a belly full of air which will usually correct itself once they've pooped. So sometimes if it's constipation, they will float a little bit, but if it's just every so often, then you look around again and they're back at the bottom doing their thing, it's nothing to be concerned about. It would just be a case of they're just in control of it. Um, Pixel, my female, loves to float at the surface. She spends more time at the top than she does at the bottom, um, which is very much a people pleaser. So it's nothing to be alarmed about, but they do do this quite frequently. It is really cute, but it can be quite alarming if you don't quite know why it's happening in the first place. But if it is just happening every now and again, and then you look back and then they're back at the bottom doing their thing, and then the next couple of days they're back at the top again, floating around, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just something they like to do. The next thing is, why does my axolotl swallow his worms and spit them back out again? And then swallow them and spit them back out again. Is he playing with it? What's he doing? What's he doing that for? What's that all about? So there's a few reasons this might be the case. The first reason, they might just be full. Sometimes, you've got to think, sometimes people try to feed more than they can handle. Um, if you feed a reasonably sized earthworm to your axolotl, that is quite the meal. If you compare it to, let's say, a feeding pellet or bloodworms, they are considerably bigger. Even if you chop them down, they're still considerably bigger meal and they're more nutritious for them too. So usually what they'll do, their eyes and their instinct tells them to take the food. So if you offer them another worm, they will happily take it. But sometimes they'll chew it, chew it, chew it and just spit it back out. And it's just because they're full. Um, other times they'll do it because they haven't chewed it enough. So axolotls don't have the, me the mechanism to be able to chew their food like me or you would, where if you get a cheeseburger and I just stuff it all in your mouth, you're gonna spit it back out. Well, most of us would, I'd give it a good go eating it, to be honest. But most of us will just spit it back out because it's just far too much for us to handle. Um, axolotls are the same, they don't obviously have hands to use. Um, and they obviously have very limited chewing abilities. So what they tend to do is they tend to chew up the worm so you'll see the worm going in quite happily. You think, oh, he's that. And then all of a sudden, he'll spit it back out. And that's just his way of breaking down his food. If you do leave it in there with them, nine times out of 10, you will notice that they will eat it just fine. Um, and if you come back in half an hour or so's time and it's still in there, then you can obviously remove it. And it probably is, they're just full. So yeah, that's why they tend to spit the food. It's a case of they're either learning to chew and they're chewing up their food for better digestion, or they're just full and quite playful quite playful as well, they like to play with the food. They always play with the food. So the next one is why Axolotl likes to bump into just about everything, he's really clumsy. Why is he so clumsy? Um, they're clumsy because they have very poor vision, they have very limited vision. Some are much better than others, whereas some Axolotls have really poor vision where they won't even see the food right in front of them. 
Um, they're very clumsy anyway. <laughs> I've watched mine. I've watched mine for hours each and every day. And uh, and uh, they'll often just swim about the tank and bump into the glass, and then they go like, boop, and they just turn around and start swimming that way, boop. And they turn around and start swimming that way, boop. It's just really cute and it's really derpy and it's really dopey of them. But it's just because they've got poor vision. That's why when you're setting up your accidental tank, you've got to take into consideration anything that could, that could hurt yourself on. Um, it might look pretty on the eye, it might look nice for you, the keeper. But if it is going to cause problems where they're going to keep bumping into things and they've got a few sharp edges and stuff, they're going to probably going to catch the tail and it's going to cause all sorts of problems. So just be wise about that when you're setting up your tank. If you didn't notice that they're bumping into things and they're not finding the food, just give them a little bit more time, help them out a little bit. So if it's food you're worried about that they're not finding, then just take the food and offer it. I always say food by hand anyway, but offer it them, put it right in front of them. What they'll tend to do is they'll tend to visualize it first. They'll come along, start to sniff it. And then before you know it, they'll snap for it. Um, just be more patient with them. They are they have terrible vision. It's probably why I like them so much. I've got bad vision as well. Um, they've got terrible vision, but it does make them quite cute and derpy and lovable and cute. I say cute and ta, I say cute again. I would say cute quite a lot, Nunta. The next one is axolotls darting about the tank. This is something people always freak out about. I get so many messages, people go, my axolotl's acting so weird and so strange and he's kind of like spazzing about his tank and he's jumping around his tank and he's causing me all sorts of upset. Now, first and foremost, you do have to make sure this isn't anything to do with the water parameters. So you have to make sure that obviously the chemical balance is safe within the aquarium. So that's why you should be, you should be doing regular water checks, uh, regular water changes, but if everything's fine on that front and the temperature as well, don't forget the temperature. But if everything is fine on that front, the chances are they're probably just having a bit of a spook. They get spooked really, 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 really easy, especially when they're small. They do tend to grow out of it as they get older, although it does still happen on occasion. But what tends to happen, the slightest movement or the slightest change of anything within their tank, it can freak them out and it can make them go all crazy. Uh, for example, sometimes just sliding the lid off to feed, they can see I'm coming to feed, just sliding the lid off of the lid jars or whatever. It will spook them, then it'll start whizzing around the tank like a crazy one. Um, but normally, after about five or six seconds, a bit of very specific time, isn't it? Five or six seconds. But usually, they do settle down quite quickly. Um, and then they obviously, they can calm down and all that, and everything's back to normal. But yeah, axons are very easily spooked. But thankfully, it's usually short-lived. Again, just make sure there's nothing in there that can cause them any harm. Make sure you have, um, obviously, the interest of the axolotl. Don't go in there to deliberately spook. Some people tap the glass. Tapping glass will easily spook your axolotl. You think about it in your home now. You're sat at home, let's say, and the whole building shakes. Just like, just momentarily, like a whole beat. You're going to freak yourself out just a little bit, aren't you? It's the same thing when you tap a glass. It might look pretty harmless to you, but you're basically vibrating that whole aquarium. Doesn't matter how big that aquarium is, you're gonna send vibrations throughout the water, which will spook them out and any other aquatic critter, critter? And any other aquatic critter for that matter. The next one is my axolotl's gills are always curling forward. What's that all about? Is he okay? What is it? What's causing that? Now there is a few things that could cause curled gills in an axolotl. The first one being stress. They do tend to do that when they're stressed. So when something's bothering them or upsetting them, they will have curled gills. Um, they can do it when they're hungry. People might argue the toss on that one, but I've noticed my babies in particular, when, it, when they know it's feeding time and I'm doing water changes, they kind of pick up, on the, pick up on the vibe and they start curiously curling their gills, waiting for food. And as soon as I feed them, go back down, perfectly happy. Um, axolotls do curl gills for a whole host of reasons. The internet will suggest that your axolotl is unhappy. There's something not right with your water. Your temperatures might be right. Now, these are all factors you have to take into consideration because by rights, your temperatures might be off, which could cause stress in the axolotl. Your water parameters might not be correct, which again will cause stress in the axolotl. But you've also got to take into consideration that sometimes they do and they're just curious. Um, I have mentioned this before in previous videos, but as long as it isn't permanently curled up forward like this, um, it might just be nothing. Um, it could just be a case of the curious. They've seen something in the tank. If you move your tank decor about, let's say, and all of a sudden your axolotl notices something different and then poof, the curled gills come out. Just put yourself in their shoes again. Let's say you go, you go out to the shops and you come back and someone while you've been at the shop has moved everything about. Your sofa where it wasn't where it used to be, it's over there. Your TV's now over there. Your pictures are all over the place. Could you just imagine? You're going to be a little bit stressing when you come back in the room like, 
What's happened here then? How did this even happen? It's going to cause natural concern, and that's what it does with an axolotl. When an axolotl is curious, they will kill their gills. Now, that's not to say you should overlook the other things too. So you need to constantly be checking your water temperatures constantly, hence why I recommend a um, digital thermometer or an infrared thingy me bob, one of them. Always keep an eye on your temperatures. That will be, if your temperatures are off, a lot of people get this misconception that your axolotl will do just fine at room temperature. Um, if your room temperature is too warm, your axolotl won't do fine, unfortunately. Um, they will show signs of stress very quickly if they're kept in higher temperatures than usual. They will show signs of sickness and fungus very quickly, again, if the temperatures are not right. So you do have to be very, very conscious of keeping your eye on those temperatures. You also have to get, again, I know I'm repeating myself here, but you absolutely have to keep your eye on your water parameters too. So your ammonia, your nitrites, and your nitrates have to all be where they need to be. There will be a video coming, I promise. I've had so many requests to do a video, so next week's or the week after, maybe the week after, because I've got next week's kind of penciled in. So maybe the week after, I'm gonna talk about tank cycling, the best way to do it, and how to maintain a good cycled tank. It's coming, I promise. I've listened, I've heard you, and it is coming. But taking all those things into consideration, if it's not something long-term, and it's just a short-term thing, some axolotl like was doing when it's feeding time, don't be too concerned about it, considered that you have taken in the other points too. Think outside of the box, people. Always make sure your water is good. Yes. And the next and final one that I like to bring to the table today is my axolotl likes to shake his booty. What is that about? Every so often I've noticed the tail up in the air and he'll be shaking his booty like a Polaroid picture. Um, that means you have a male. That confirms that you have a male. So it's kind of weird when you see the mating dance, it's not what you'd, you'd perceive it to be. If I'd have said to you, right, axolotls breed how? And if you didn't have any information on how they do it, and I said to you, how do they do it? Just try, and, try your best to explain how you think an axolotl might, might mate with a fellow axolotl. Um, you might consider the whole usual, without going into it, let's keep it family friendly. You might assume it would kind of be very similar to any other kind of amphibian friend, shall we say. Um, axolotls breed in a very different way, so the male will chase the female to begin with and show an interest first and foremost. His, let's be very careful I'll word this, his bulge, shall we say, will bulge. <laughs> and what he will do is when it's time to mate or breed, he will put his tail directly in the air like that. It almost looks like someone snapped it up there like that. His area will bulge considerably and he'll start shaking his tail further everywhere. It's to get the female's attention. The female will show an interest and she'll come right up and then the male will start bobbing along and dropping off little sperm sacs all around the aquarium. The female will then follow up, follow the male about and she will sit on the sperm sacs which will make her fertile. Um, it's quite the sight. Um, yeah, it's quite unusual. Well, it's not quite unusual, it's very common. But it's quite, what's the word? It takes some getting used to, shall we say. <laughs> It really does. It is, um, it's, it's fascinating in its own way, but um, it's quite strange. I remember my wife very first seen it, she said, Frank, Frankie, what's he doing? What's he doing? I said, like, don't worry, love, sit down, I'll tell you about the birds and the bees. <laughs> but no, it was, quite, it, was quite the, um, it was quite the visual, shall we say. <laughs> Nothing quite compares you for it, that's what we'll say. But if your male, if your axle is doing that, we can pretty much confirm that it's a male. Um, but some people say, how do you tell a male and a female apart? The best way, well not the best way, but this is how I found out about one of mine who I was convinced was a female. Popped the female in with Pixel, who is also a female. Within about literally two minutes, he was there, tail in the air, waggling his tail feather like in no end. He was shaking it around like a Polaroid picture over, I couldn't keep up with him. Um, and I definitely wasn't ready for his jelly, let's put it that way. <laughs> Um, and that's how we instantly knew that actually this is not a female, this is actually a male. So it is one surefire way to make sure you know you've got a male or a female. Now I'm not suggesting you should start chucking your axolotls together and watching them. Are you going to do anything? Don't do anything like that because that's a really silly way of doing it. But if you are putting axolotls together and one of them does the little tail shake, you've pretty much guaranteed yourself a male. And that pretty much wraps up this week's video. Um, I do hope you like the new changes that I've made. I've kind of slightly changed the camera angle. I've obviously gone for more professional lighting, which I kind of like, so then I don't have to solely rely on, on daylight, which I just, it's just a nightmare. So like I said before in previous videos, there's been so many times where I had so many ideas that I want to just literally throw out in videos and kind of start recording clips here, there, and everywhere. And I can't do it just based on the fact that I haven't got the light. This is only half of Frankie's Aquatics behind me. This is where I keep my, 
um, my axolotls. I've got a whole breeding station upstairs that I'd love to show you, like as a backdrop, which I just haven't been able to show you because I haven't had the sufficient lighting to do so. Whereas now this, this lighting, um, I hope first and foremost you guys like the lighting. So do let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Is it something you like? Is it good? Does it work? Um, I spent a bit of wonga on this light, so I'm hoping it's worked out quite well and you've enjoyed it. Um, next week's video is going to be a future look into Frankie's Aquatics and the directions and the goals and the dreams that I'm hoping for, the, for this YouTube channel and for Frankie's Aquatics as a whole. Um, it's something that people have been itch itching to see apparently when I kind of downloaded the carrot on Instagram. People were like, I absolutely want to see that. I want to see that vlog sort of format that you're working on. So that's what hopefully, that's what next week's video will be. A few good things coming up. I hope you're going to be around to see them. So if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like button. It just lets me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm producing. Also hit the subscribe button just to keep yourself in that loop and ring that notification bell. And if you haven't done so already, I've said that already. <laughs>